What is up everybody, we are back again, and uh, I've had a string of questions, mainly on an NCIX APU uh, video about how I got my AMD 965 Black Edition Phenom 2 to 4GHz, and this is through a combination of several things. Number one, cooling. Number two, knowing the right um, setup between um, CPU multiplier and the bus frequency, and also being able to just um, accurately monitor my computer. And I'm going to walk you guys through on how to overclock on an ASUS board. Um, it may look a little funny right now, but when the panel is on, uh, the camera does project it quite weirdly, or um, interpret it quite weirdly. But uh, you can't even actually see the blue heat sinks because there's so much UV light from all around. There's more down here and there's more up here. But yeah, if you guys want to see a quick walkthrough of my system, I've got a video entailing all my parts. So let's get started. All right. So the first step in being able to overclock is you actually have to set a goal for yourself. For me, I wanted to at least get 4 gigahertz out of mine, and uh, I wanted it to be completely stable, and that's what happened. So we are going to shut down the computer really quick, and I will take you guys through the BIOS. Alright, just got to install an update real quick. Um, overclocking is really honestly not all that complicated. It's actually quite easy to be honest. Uh, you just have to be able to know what you're doing. Alright, system off. There we go, make sure the pump is running, yep. Alright, so the screen should pop on here real quick. And should come up with my BIOS. Alright, here we go. It's got all the information about everything that I have in my system currently. Alright, so right now my CPU is at just over 4.1. And uh, yeah, so for an ASUS motherboard, uh, as you can see, it does say ASUS up there. It does give you all the information that you need, motherboard type, uh, BIOS update version, CPU type, and your RAM and the speed and how much of RAM or how much of the RAM you have. So let's go into the advanced mode really quick. Hop over to AI Tweaker, which is one step over from the main. Um, so what you see here is a list of frequencies. You're going to be wanting to go for the top three, and your current CPU speed is the first one, your target CPU is the second one, in your current memory frequency. Now memory frequency is actually quite important but uh, yeah. So here you have the AI overclock tuner. You want to, it usually does come set on manual. Uh, you'd want to set it on, uh, or it usually does come set on automatic. You'd want to set it on manual. For me to achieve my just over 4.1 gigahertz overclock I have my CPU ratio set at 7 and my bus frequency set at or 239. So here's a quick look at those. I am using 1600 megahertz memory, uh, but I'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, PTI frequency, you're going to want to leave that alone because that really doesn't matter unless you're going to be overclocking your GPU. But yeah. So for the DDR3, I have a set of 1273 megahertz. Now, the reason why you'd want to do this is that certain programs, <coughs> actually, what it has done for me is that it's also tried to overclock my RAM at the exact same time that it's overclocking my CPU. And that ended up in a lot of blue screens and a lot of frustration. So, since I'm using 1600 megahertz, I want to play it safe and go for the 1273. If you have 1866 and you have something around 1600 megahertz, I'd recommend going for that. And if you have 1333, just going for anything under 1200. So, I'm going to set it to 1273. Um, and also, if you don't have this kind of a setup where it does the automatic calculations, like here, let's change it to 238. There you go, it changes. To either 9, there you go. So if you don't have that, what you want to do is you'd want to multiply your CPU ratio and your bus frequency together. So let's reset the system real quick. This will actually leave my PC itself on. I finally did get my Underglow installed. Uh, if you guys want to see uh, videos of my PC, then there actually are. Um, two videos up about it. Right here we will go back through the BIOS, make sure everything is the way that we wanted it, just over 4.1 gigahertz, and then we will go to the boot drive, load it up on the OS from my SSD, and uh, 
Yeah. All right, and we will log in here in a second. I'm not exactly sure what that was. Okay. All right, so we're going to log in while I'm trying to type with one hand and talk at the same time. Hey, I did it. All right. So, um, there's a couple of tools that I do use to monitor. Down here on my little start menu. Whoops. Okay, there's something called core temperature right here. And you're going to want to start that up. And what that does is it gives you... Okay. Uh, you'd want to start it up and it gives you your max frequency and then it gives you your temperature readouts my camera would focus that would be phenomenal, hey there we go alright so it's giving me my temperature readings here and I'm going to want to open up Prime95 just stress testing, okay and then you wouldn't want to focus on this one for now alright and then you'd also want to open up something called CPU ID what this does is it gives you the uh, real-time frequencies for everything. Close down Steam. Don't need that open for this. Um, so you have your core temp, your CPU-Z, and your Prime95. So I'm going to ramp up the fans real quick to make sure that I get nice chilly temperatures. Up the pump. Fans. It does get quite loud when it's uh, overclocking, but I'm just getting it ready to overclock. So we're going to do small FFTs, which just places stress on the whole system. Um, so we're going to hit that. And you can see my current core speed. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, the BIOS is a little optimistic about the current speed. But you'd want to go ahead and uh, trust what it says on the CPU ID, since it is in more real time than the actual... Um, BIOS and if you want to run a stability test run Prime 95 you can either run it for 12 hours stable and if you do that that's actually pretty good and your ideal thing would be go for 24 hours with consistent temperatures and everything uh, the ambient room temperature in here is actually a little high so my temperatures are hovering right around 46 degrees which is usually far higher than it usually is um, I think the lowest that I've ever actually recorded is 28 degrees Celsius that was on idle and my load I think the lowest that I've ever recorded was 34 but that was when the ambient room temperature was, I think, 60, 68 degrees, 69. But yep, that is how you guys overclock. Remember that there are limitations for every CPU. Um, and for your ideal overclock, you want to go for a unlocked CPU, because that means that you can mess with the multiplier all over the place. But yeah, so that's what you'd want to do for overclocking, uh, specifically helping with a Phenom 965, the Black Edition. And um, so I'd like to thank you guys for watching my video, and I will see you guys next time.